Oh, uh, I, didn't I didn't see you there. there. Hey, Flo. <laughs> Happy birthday, Flo, yeah. by the oh, way. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. Woo! It's Flo's birthday. I celebrated by wearing this awesome shirt. Yes. Wow. Um, but we also celebrated in another way, because today is the last day of this edition of The Great War on the road when we've been in England. We were first in Dorset at the Tank Museum Bovington, and in the last couple of days we've been in Essex at the Stowmaris Aerodrome. Uh, the best, uh, the best, uh, best, how would I say it? Preserved aerodrome, World War I aerodrome <laughs> in Europe. There we go, that's how I would say it. If I, if I were Flo, I might say the same thing. And by the way, it is actually pronounced Stowmari, not Stowmarie or Stowmarie. It's Stowmarie, all the locals say that, right? Yeah, that's how it is. Okay, so let's talk about how the trip actually worked, how we started things off and what we did. You guys started before I did, so, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, we went from France to Belgium. They drove. Um, a lot of familiar names on the street signs in Belgium, so we kind of realized that we really need to go to Flanders, which we probably will be... Flanders! Sorry, I can't help that. Yeah, so. I, it's natural. Uh, it's we, natural if you're Homer Simpson, but thanks. We will go uh, to Belgium probably sometime next year. Of course, there will be an announcement. Yeah. I uh, took the ferry, picked Emini up at the airport. Yeah, I flew from Stockholm to Gatwick and you picked me up at Gatwick. Yeah, it's very cool. Driving on the left side was exciting for about 10 minutes. And then it was just driving. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, we drove to, uh, to uh, we, yeah, well, we drove to the, the Tank Museum Bovington, which they say is not called the Bovington Tank Museum. It's the it's Tank Museum in Bovington. The Tank Museum in Bovington. Um, which was, um, honestly, it was one of the cooler thing museums I've ever been to. Absolutely. I thought it was going to be nice and I thought there'd be stuff, but I didn't realize how gigantic it was going to be. Yeah. There's 300 tanks there from different nations and from different eras. And if you think 300 tanks takes up a lot of space, you are absolutely right. Yeah, it's a huge place. Everything, the main exhibition is really fantastic. I mean, of course, we were there for the World War I tanks. Yeah. But also, you know, there are things from World War II, from the Cold War, everything, even to for the modern days. I think you have the Challenge, uh, Challenger 2, I think it's called. Yeah. Really good stuff. Definitely check it out. Yeah. We filmed some great videos there, of course, about the World War I tanks. Um, yeah, we, we shot at least three specials there. And an armored car special, too, because they have some armored cars. Um, and David Willey, really. Uh, is the curator of the museum, and he's actually very cool. And once you get him on camera, he just doesn't shut up. He's kind of like me. Yeah. Uh, and he was really fun to talk to. And Roz and Matt, and what was the other guy's name? Uh, Nick. Nick. Yeah, they were really cool. Everybody was really cool there. Um, so we shot a bunch of stuff, and they have the only Mark I left in the world there, the only British Mark I tank. And uh, so we got to see the evolution of the tanks all in a, in a room and stuff. And uh, We went into a tank. Oh, we went into the Mark IV. Uh, which was really, really claustrophobic, even without the oil and the noise and, you know, the Germans firing machine guns at us and stuff like that. And when we were in there, what was really cool was that Brian Adams was also inside the Mark IV tank. I, it was completely uh, unexpected because they weren't even open at the time. So, he, you know, he'd been there all night, obviously, which seems like the kind of thing Brian Adams would do. Uh, we had an excellent breakfast uh, at, at the, what was it called, the Black Dog? The Black Dog Inn. That was where we stayed, the Black Dog Inn, and an even more excellent dinner at the Granary. The Granary? Yeah, because in Dorset, you know, a lot of people go there for the hotels. It's starting to rain. Okay. Um, so we should go a little faster? Yeah. So the Granary for dinner, Black Dog Inn for staying. Awesome breakfast. tanks. Awesome. Saw a lot of cool stuff. Then we drove all the way to Essex, had a very traditional English traffic jam around London. Yeah, because there's only there's one tunnel with two lanes, and if there's any traffic problems, that's it. So, and yeah. I like that we're getting English weather. Anyhow, we got to uh, we we spent Thursday at the Stowmaris uh, Aerodrome filming a bunch of specials about the evolution of British planes and stuff. And uh, Rory, who uh, used to work with us as a as an intern last year, he he's a local boy here, so he put us in touch with everybody. He volunteers at the aerodrome. And he knows what all the, the functions of all the buildings were. So we did a special about how life in an aerodrome during the First World War actually functioned. And it's very cool, the Stomar, the aerodrome. The, uh, there's a bunch of old planes from the F First World War. So we did a series of shots on them. And then we went back to our hotel. Yeah, and I mean, if it's, the main thing was the weekend. Yeah. Oh, because uh, yeah, it started, that, that, we, that was on Friday that we shot the, the stuff, at the, yeah. uh, shot a bunch of stuff. Yesterday and today we met hundreds of our fans and signed lots of autographs and drank a bunch of wine and watched planes doing loop to loops and stuff and you don't realize until you actually see these planes in action how insane 
<laughs> flying was a hundred years ago. Uh, and especially seeing them close up, like watching the BE-2. That thing goes like 55 miles an hour. That's it. And it's, it's like a bus driving through the sky at 55 miles an hour. And you can see, if you had a gun, even on the ground, you could shoot that down. No yeah, problem. So, and then we gave you a very different perspective seeing the planes in the air. And we were so happy with the weather. Going to be a lot of great footage. So I oh, think and uh, the BE-2 when it was flying, uh, uh, Brian Adams was actually in the passenger seat of the BE-2, which was unexpected to see him yet again over the weekend, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys out there wouldn't have expected that. Neither did we. So he must have gotten there before we got there to get up in the yeah. plane. And we had a big, we had a three-course dinner with a bunch of fans. Um, that was it was the dinner was from the recipes of the officers mess from a hundred years ago yeah, Really good stuff. Uh, it was it was really excellent food Yeah, we had a great night with uh, with a few fans and everything and it was great meeting everybody on Saturday and Sunday Seeing the planes doing some photos goofing around lots of autographs uh, and everything So it was really cool and good food at the Prince of Wales. Yeah, Twice. Prince, Prince, of Wales, Prince of Wales the pub nice food. where the pilots of the 37th squadron of the Royal Flank were, were already getting drunk a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago. And, we, and had... we saw a bunch of uh, historical recreation guys too. There, were, there was a bunch of really cool stuff at the, uh, at the, at the aerodrome meet. And they, this was the first time they've done something like this and they want to do it next summer and we're definitely coming next summer. Absolutely. And absolutely. we're probably going to go to Tank Fest at the Bovington Museum. Yeah, or, some, or something around Another there. World War I thing. So, um, um, yeah, it's really raining right now. I want to just say one thing. Yeah. Um, and I'll say one thing after that too. Counterfeit joy. Oh yeah, Counterfeit Joy. Uh, this band Counterfeit Joy was supposed to play at the hotel uh, Friday night. And I went down to the hotel bar at like 10 o'clock and the place was cleared out for a band to play. But there was no band and they must have done a sound check by then. So I said to the bartender, um, is, is the band going to play? And he said, no, no, not they cancelled, they broke up. So yeah. Counterfeit Joy broke up just before we could tell how awesome they must have been, right? Yeah, and, and introduced them to hundreds of thousands of people on YouTube. Counterfeit Joy, Conrad von Hotzendorf's favorite alternate Brit Britpop and indie 80s and 90s cover band. Yeah, right? that's a historical fact. And the less said about the band we saw yesterday night, illicit. Uh, no, I don't want to say too much or too little about them, because we were entertained, actually. And that's actually, the, whatever we think of the band, personally, we were actually entertained. So um, I, will, I would like to close with one thing, yeah. if there's nothing else you'd like to add. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. It was a really good week, and we shot a bunch of good stuff. And today, on Sunday, in the afternoon, by the time the rest of the original cast of Stand By Me turned up, I can honestly say, those were the best days of my life. Hey, isn't that the guy from The Great War? Shut yeah, up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah.